Good afternoon, everyone. We'd like to welcome you to the Mesa City Council study session for the afternoon of July the 3rd, 2023. Uh, Council Member Goforth is unable to attend tonight and she is, is, is excused, but Vice Mayor Heredia and Council Member Spilsbury are both attending this meeting via Zoom and all other council members are present. Item one on our, item one on our agenda for this meeting uh, is uh, tonight's council meeting agenda. That's for our July, and also the July 10th meeting. So let's go through tonight's agenda first. Council, I know we just talked about this a day or two ago, but uh, any additional information anyone would like on tonight's agenda? Is that a yes? Okay. <laughs> Ms. Pillsbury or Mr. Heredia, any <clears throat> questions? I'm good. No questions. Okay, thank you. Uh, maybe moving to the July 10th meeting. Council, any, uh, Mr. Butler, anything about that meeting? I, that we do have a, a change to that agenda, do we not? Yes, Mr. Mayor and Council, um, we are removing items 7A through 7C, all dealing with the Legacy Gateway Hotels. That will be brought back at a, at a future time as we continue to work with the developer on that. Okay. Thank you very much. Council, other, uh, yes. Um, item 4D, I know uh, we have an item on the agenda for um, awarding the, con the construction contract. If it's not too late, I would like to make a recommendation or suggestion and looking at, I looked at the floor plan that we had for that. Is someone from economic development here? Oh, Jay's here. Hi, Jay. Hello. So it was a little bit of an afterthought. I know a few weeks ago you made the presentation as far as the floor plan. And thinking about the workforce development area on the bottom floor, on the basement floor, um, we have the podcast studio. And I'd like to make a suggestion that we also look at maybe can we do any music recording or somehow outfit that room that it could also do that. There are aspirations of doing um, an entrepreneurial art scene around film and music maybe coming up for our downtown and I didn't know if it would be possible to also have that ability in that area to do um, like some music recording or, or on a simplistic manner. I don't know what that's required and it's just a thought over the weekend. I Mayor Councilmember Duff, yes, I think that can be incorporated and we can certainly incorporate some recording um, AV equipment to the podcast room, certainly, and perhaps even another area in that downstairs uh, layout as well. Mm. That'd be wonderful. Um, I know with the music festival, we're wanting to really grow that and be an entrepreneurial center for um, music. And uh, I think that would really help to have that addendum in our workforce development area. Okay. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you, Council. Under other agenda items for the July 10th meeting, Mr. Summers. Um, Mr. Butler, item 60, Gateway Interchange Phase 3. Uh, they've been, the developer's been working on this project for quite some time, but we have, there's a concern. The uh, uh, water wastewater infrastructure has a, a fairly long route has to connect uh, Warner and Sossamouth memory serves. So that's quite a distance. The issue that we're having is that they are willing to invest tens of millions of dollars in fronting that infrastructure. But other, uh, pri they, they got private development agreements with most property owners, but not all of them. So there's a potential that those <coughs> private property owners could then hook into the system and not pay their fair share of that infrastructure cost. That doesn't seem fair. So what can we do? Can we find either a shorter route for the water wastewater line that would work or make amendments to the code uh, to make sure that there's buy-in from others? 
Right, and Mayor, Council Member Summers, I'm sure you've all heard from um, developers or property owners um, during your time on Council about this dilemma, right, when they're looking to develop their property ahead of the infrastructure and, and some of the burdens that that poses on them as far as running that infrastructure and then um, whether they have cooperative property owners along the way who choose to work with them on some form of reimbursement. So um, Mr. Brady's heard that. He's, I know several of you have raised this and he's, and he's heard from uh, developers as well um, about this dilemma. And so what he's done is ask uh, Natalie Lewis and Mark Hirschberg to take a look at this issue, look at what other cities are doing. Are there other industry best practices that we should be incorporating in Mesa to help um, situations like you just described and so um, they're going to they're going to scrub this down like I said look at um, what other cities are doing and, and report back to council on whether there's any changes that we should um, updates to our policies and procedures to bring us more in line yeah it, it would be the way it's set up right now would be akin to, to some folks who are in the county uh, that are coming into the city and they'll make a water connection for their home and then having people tap into that without having to pay their fair share that that's just not uh, that's just not fair so I'm, I'm encouraged that that's moving forward and we'll have a solution hopefully soon yeah. uh, or at least we'll know what it'll be by the end of the uh, council break mayor council member Sam, absolutely they'll they'll be working on this as quickly as possible Very good. <coughs> thank you thank you council any other questions on our july 10th agenda okay all right Thank you, Mr. Reddy. Are you good? Yes. Okay. I'm good. Thank you, I, Julie. I saw you nodding no, so thank you. Next item on our agenda, item 2A, is a presentation on the use and sale of fireworks and enforcement efforts. Timely topic, isn't it? Good evening, Mayor, Council. Um, my name is uh, Deputy Chief Sean Alexander. I'm the Fire Marshal, and with me tonight we have uh, Commander uh, Jeffrey Cutler from Mesa PD. So this slide is just a brief overview of the statutes, uh, the state laws. Um, this is a presentation that we've done in the past. There's nothing really new here. Um, the There are legal fireworks that are um, overseen by fire prevention, um, and those are sold generally through our uh, permitted tents. Um, and then we have our illegal fireworks, which is a big, significant portion of our um, of our fireworks challenges on the Fourth of July and New Year's Eve. Uh, we have been in fire prevention. We have uh, for this year we have 23 permitted tents that have been approved and inspected by fire inspectors, and uh, we've uh, found one or two that had some illegal fireworks in there. We cleared those out. Uh, uh, we've confirmed and uh, uh, along with PD, they've done drop by inspections of these to ensure that uh, the, what is being sold at the permitted legal tents is all legal. Uh, this slide is, to, it, I'm sure you've seen it before. It's, it's uh, just a very brief overview of what is legal and what is not. Essentially, if it goes into the air or if it has a loud report, a, a loud bang, uh, it's considered illegal. This slide shows the dates and times that uh, consumer fireworks are permitted, and this is city code has, has adopted the state law. This is almost word for word right out of the state law. Um, we have a uh, permitted use period coming up obviously, uh, with the holiday, and on the evening of July 4th, along with uh, New Year's Eve, the normal hours that are permitted is extended by two hours until 1 a.m. Normally, for, for the rest of the year, it, it's 
Uh, it can only go until 11 p.m. Mayor and Council, if I could, because some people, when you don't see this, if you can go back to the color, the green, yellow. So the yellow is allowed during those, those days and those hours. That's what that's saying. Um, the red is never legal. And so that's what that's saying, the next slide, if you go forward to the next slide. So just so for people that are trying to look at the words and match the colors and the chart, I like the chart, actually. I'm visual, so I like that chart and, and putting it into the, the yellow is legal during certain hours. Uh, I'm not familiar with the with the holiday Diwali. Is that not a fixed? Is that tied to the lunar calendar or something? Is there a reason we don't so, have days attached to that? It, it is, okay. uh, Mr. Mayor. Uh, that was recently added to the state law. It is a Hindu holiday, generally observed towards the uh, mid to late October period. Okay. It's a it's a multi day holiday, but the fireworks are only allowed on the second and third day of of the overall holiday. Yes, Ms. Duff. So looking at the chart, I like the colors too. <laughs> is, is this similar with other surrounding cities? Um, are they, you know, as far as what they legal in? So this is deemed by the state what is legal, not the, legal. The, okay. that, that is it's correct. by the state. So it is uniform throughout the valley and throughout the state. Yes, we, okay. we've adopted state code and we've made no changes to it. Okay. I just wanted to, thank you. So just to reiterate what we, I think the people in this room know, but tomorrow our email will be full of complaints about uh, exactly. tonight's, or well, tomorrow night's activities. Uh, and un our unfortunate answer is that this, the cities are preempted by the state legislature. We have little or no control over what are legal and illegal fireworks. And, and I, I think we've just updated our ordinance to reflect the changes that the state made and that's what you're presenting right now, right? Yes, sir. This, this is essentially the same presentation that we've given in previous um, periods of authorized use. The state law has not been updated recently other than to include the, the Diwali holiday. Okay. The uh, city code was updated last year to uh, include, basically copy a significant portion of the state law into the uh, Title VI criminal code. So it now resides in both the fire code and also for enforcement efforts in the criminal code. Great, thank you. So this slide essentially talks about the enforcement efforts that uh, both Mesa Fire Prevention and the police department are taking. <clears throat> we have done all of this to this point. Uh, as, and as I mentioned earlier in, in my presentation, uh, we have visited every permitted point of sale and ensured that they are only selling legal fireworks. Uh, the challenges that we have seen the last few years in the city are not coming, in my opinion, from the legal sales. They are coming in from out of state. They are coming in through a whole host of different areas. And those are areas that we can't regulate because we're not issuing permits for those. Um, Mesa Police has Fire prevention and, and the community action officers, we have been meeting the last few, uh, the, the last month to prepare for this season. And uh, the community action officers actually came up with a, what I feel is a pretty novel attempt to at crime prevention efforts, but they, they've essentially adopted or put into place a reporting line and email where residents can notify the police department about uh, regular offenders for illegal fireworks, and that, that's, that can be done anonymously. When those referrals are made, uh, the community action officers are delivering a flyer to the residents that essentially informs them of the, of the requirements and then lets them know that they've been, uh, that the police department and fire department have been notified about their actions. Uh, for the, I believe it's the top 50 offenders, they were actually delivering those in person to uh, remind individuals of the uh, the consequences of setting off illegal fireworks. I think we'll have much more uh, effective mitigation efforts through education on this than we will through enforcement. Um, I, th I think we can have a bigger outreach that way. But uh, Commander Keller will also, I'll give him an opportunity to talk about the enforcement efforts. Mayor Council, yeah, the flyer was, we 
targeted that to the, the 50 largest calls for service over the past few years of whose offenders have been um, to get that out to them. And, sorry. sorry. Um, we also focused um, our efforts on the tip line too. So people have called information in that says somebody might have um, illegal fireworks or has in the past had legal fireworks. So we, we've targeted those where our community action officers will go out and actually hand deliver that to them. So kind of give them the, inf the education and the kind of the warning that this is the law and this is what we're gonna be enforcing. Uh, and of course, if we see um, possession of illegal fireworks, we're seizing that and citing. So prior to tomorrow night, we've been focusing on education and prevention um, through those efforts, um, through making contacts with people. Um, and then going into the 4th of July tomorrow, we're gonna be focusing mainly on enforcement. We have our street crimes units, our community action officers are gonna be available all night long to go out and look for uh, aerial fireworks illegal fireworks, if we find them, we will be citing and seizing fireworks. And the patrol officers, when they're um, not on call, will also be doing the exact same thing. So that's gonna be our efforts for tomorrow night. Ms. Steph. So tomorrow, we're gonna have a lot of people who want to alert you about illegal fireworks in their neighborhood. What is the best course of action? Is it this email or is it the non-emergency number or what is the course of action for these Mayor, days. Councilmember Duff, um, of course they can use that tip, tip email line. Um, if it's in progress, they see it going on, they can always use the non-emergency line um, to put a call for service in for our officers to respond. Our street crimes units will also hear that information and, and if they need to see it deemed necessary, they'll go over there um, to make contact with them. So it's either patrol or our, our plainclothes officers. So the fireworks at maceaz.gov is, mm -hmm. is the tip line yeah. to send. Of course, if they, if they see it in progress, mm -hmm. they can just dial the non-emergency number and we'll respond. Okay, okay, all right. So the city link isn't an option. It would be best just to do the email? Yes. Or the non-emergency, okay, thank you. And, and with that, we will get a lot at one time. We're gonna have a, you know, that typically happens, you will get a bunch of calls at one moment. And so we obviously have to prioritize that with who we can actually make contact with, but we'll work our best to get through those, uh, those calls for service. Mr. Freeman. Uh, thank you, Mayor. <laughs> you know, sometimes I'm just speechless at the amount of fireworks, the illegal fireworks that go off in our community, especially, I think all of our neighborhoods are affected by it. And, and I, I just, I saw on the news this morning, Avondale is having zero tolerance in their enforcement team for illegal fireworks. And I hope that, you know, I don't want that to happen, but I think we need to send the message to illegal fireworks users. And I know last year there was undercover uh, efforts done and seized a lot of fireworks and I, that was important in sending the message to those that buy illegal fireworks and then try to sell them either from their homes or from uh, convenience stores as you know <clears throat> i i just think that it's still important that education is a key but there are some that continue to disregard that and they can not only harm themselves but others, there has been structure fires in my district caused specifically by fireworks and people have lost their homes and uh, it's, it, it's just terrible that all this has to happen. But I just pl applaud patrol and others going out, our CAOs and undercover street, you know, crime gang going out and uh, enforcing it. I, it's necessary. So. I don't know what else to say other than I hope at some point we get a handle on it. And I don't know how it's going to happen, but it's going to come gradually. So thank you for your efforts, and especially patrol going out. I know that they're busy this time, uh, during this time of season. And, you know, I hope they can work till 2 or 3 in the morning because that's what happens around my neighborhood, unfortunately. How about yours, Mayor? <laughs> I got stories I can tell for sure. I, I, this is, I, I'm impressed with the enforcement, the kind of the, the preemptive enforcement that you've done. That's great. Because uh, I think, I mean, I, uh, I could take you in my neighborhood to, <laughs> you know, the folks that, that have a tradition of illegal fireworks. And uh, it sounds like that word is getting out and, and uh, hopefully they were in the top 50 that got a visit, you know, from a police officer or a firefighter letting them know that there's consequences, you know, to that. So. Uh, I'm sure tomorrow is going to be, uh, I recall last year, uh, I had to drive home in between our fireworks display and, and, and as I drove back, you know, for the downtown, well, number one, we got a world-class, wonderful, 
100% legal fireworks uh, display tomorrow night in downtown Mesa in, in, in and around uh, the rendezvous area and uh, at the Mesa Centennial Hall. And, and so invite everyone to come. You, you won't be disappointed at all. Uh, but as I was driving into that display last year, there was not a, a neighborhood in town that was not, you know, didn't have this going on. So uh, thank you for your efforts, you know, at try, trying to curb this. It, it is, this is dangerous. You know, people will be seriously injured and, and uh, animals will be terrorized. And I mean, there's some pretty significant consequences that come from this. So I, I join in the choir saying, please enjoy fireworks responsibly. Please go to a professional so show. Uh, and we'd invite you to come to the free fireworks display that will be in downtown Mesa tomorrow night. Uh, gentlemen, did you have anything more to your presentation? Slide. Yeah, there was one more slide. Yeah. Penalties. Oh, penalties. There you go. That'll get our attention. Okay, so again, th these were just mirrored in the criminal code this last year uh, for the city of Mesa. And it just describes that the, this is a misdemeanor uh, for certain circumstances, as well as uh, a fine. Um, and this is what the police officers will be using to, uh, to for enforcement purposes. We do, we will see some fireworks tomorrow night. I'm certain of it. Um, but to an uh, answer your comment, Councilmember Freeman. Uh, this is a significant safety issue every season. We see a significant increase in calls uh, during this time, and these fireworks will undoubtedly um, land on someone's rooftop or in someone's yard. Um, another area that can be focused on is proper disposal and making sure that these are, uh, any legal fireworks that are used are soaked in water before being placed in the trash. That's also a significant number of uh, calls for service, uh, and it it will be a very busy night for both the police and the fire department. Ms. Duff. I know Avondale, I was watching on the news this morning, they're doing a zero tolerance, no warnings. Um, are we in that same position or? <coughs> or? Council, uh, Mayor, Councilor Duff, um, we are not issuing warnings. We're doing citations this year. So zero tolerance. If, you're, if you're in violation you're, you're of the statute, we'll, we'll be citing you. Minimum of thousand dollars, no second chances. Yes, ma'am. Great, thanks. Ms. Pillsbury, you look like you have something to say. Yes, thank you. I just had a question. So, the um, they're still they do they still have to be caught in the act? Well, for the um, aerial displays, yes, we have to catch somebody in the act of shooting one off. However, if they're in possession of it, it's still also a crime. So. If they don't catch them in the act, but they have possession of them, we'll also seize those in sight. Oh, okay, that's good to know. So yeah, I, I think that's important to know. And then I do think that as we start to do some enforcement, it will make a big difference and word will spread through these neighborhoods like, oh, the police are actually doing something now. So I, I really, really appreciate the enforcement efforts. And I think it's important to just reiterate as many times as we can that the um, fireworks tomorrow can only go till 1 a.m. Anything after 1 a.m., you're going to get fined, and that nothing can shoot in the air. Nothing, right? Anything that goes aerial is illegal. I think those two things need to just be stressed as much as we can to anyone we talk to. That is correct, Council Member. Um, the, in addition to the celebration of freedom that the mayor uh, was discussing, the only other authorized legal shoot will be out at Eastmark. Um, but those those will be done and over with long before the uh, one o'clock hour. Right. Okay. Well, thank you, gentlemen. A great, great reminder. Very timely. And again, we encourage uh, folks in the community, if you dear, do see or hear illegal activity, please uh, let the Mason Police and Fire Department know and we'll respond accordingly. And hopefully we'll, people will find uh, legal and, and appropriate ways to celebrate the 4th with us tomorrow. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Um, moving on, item 2B on our agenda for this meeting is to take action on board appointments. Is there a motion to that effect to approve those appointments? Thank you, Mr. Freeman. Seconded by Ms. Duff. Um, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Thank you. I heard both Ms. Spilsbury and Vice Mayor Heredi uh, say aye. Uh, any opposed? Thank you. That passes unanimously. 
Item three on our agenda is to acknowledge the receipt of minutes. Is there a motion to that effect? Thank you, Mr. Summers and Mr. Freeman. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Thank you. Aye. Thank you. Both um, uh, Council Member Spilsbury and Vice Mayor Heredia voted aye. Are there any opposed? Thank you. That passes unanimously. Next item on our agenda is current events and current events and conferences attended. Council members, anything you'd like to share with us? Yes, Ms. Spilsbury. I'll just make one announcement. Um, in District 2, this Saturday is our general plan meeting. It's um, from 9 to 11 a.m. at the Jefferson Rec Center. So if you have any ideas, feedback, opinions about transportation, transit, or the balanced housing master plan, we'd love to have you come and give us all of your information that you'd like us to know to help plan our city. Thank you, Ms. Duff. And thank you for that mention, Councilmember Spilsbury. I would like to also chime in on that. The uh, District 4 General Plan Urban Lab Workshop is this Saturday the 8th at 6 p.m. at the um, Charles K. Luster Community Room, which is, at, I believe it's 940 North Mesa Drive. It's a very interactive thing, so it's not just listening. So please come out, shape our future, and um, we'll have a great time. I really appreciate the participation for shaping our 2050 plan. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, these meetings will be held in each of the districts. So uh, if you don't live in one of these council members' districts, please stay tuned and please come out and, and uh, participate when that happens. Uh, as far as, oh, I, I, uh, Mr. Summers, we had a great tour of Textron out in yeah. District 6. Um, I was, that was uh, an amazing facility with, you know, Cessna and uh, some wonderful brands, uh, beautiful facility. So lots of good jobs at that location. Excellent connection with our education system. That's right. And uh, hiring veterans to, to program. Right. Yeah, if you've driven by the Textron building on the campus of the Gateway Airport, it's, uh, it's an amazing facility. Uh, also, I had the privilege on Friday of speaking at the 50th anniversary of the Mesa West Rotary Club. Um, the, a lot of wonderful service has been provided over the years by the Mesa West Rotary Club, so we're grateful for their contribution to our community. Um, Mr. Butler, what does our schedule of future meetings look like? Mayor, I know you and Council will be disappointed, but you don't have to see all of our smiling faces on Thursday morning. Study session is canceled this coming Thursday, and, uh, and so we will see you back again here next Monday at 515 for our final Council meeting before the, the summer break. And then, Mayor, just to piggyback on um, what you were saying about the district uh, general plan meetings coming up, I know District 1, um, in addition to uh, District 2 and 4 that the council members have spoke to, District 1 is uh, Wednesday, July 12th at the St. Luke Lutheran Church. So that's Wednesday, July 12th from 6 to 8 p.m. Uh, at, at St. Luke Lutheran Church. And with that, I, I was supposed to also give another promo, but I think <coughs> Council's done a great job of talking about our free, world-class, completely legal uh, fireworks display that's occurring uh, tomorrow night as part of the Celebration of Freedom. So that uh, starts at 6 o'clock at the Convention Center area, and again, it's free. So please bring your families and come out and enjoy this safe, uh, fun environment in downtown Mesa. Great. Yeah, so the festivities kick off at 6, but at 5 o'clock in the convention center, we will be having hosting a uh, naturalization service. So if you haven't uh, seen one of these, I encourage everyone to attend. We'll have probably 50 or 80, you know, brand new Americans uh, being sworn in by a federal judge. Uh, there's a wonderful, you know, this is a, a we're hosting a, a federal uh, convening uh, for, for that purpose but, but we'll get to participate in that program and and that if you haven't seen that that is really something not to be missed and then uh, mayor quick question on that <clears throat> sorry it's hard to jump in when i'm on the on the screen but where's parking for that i was thinking about because everything's kind of shut down so where are people supposed to park it for the for that ceremony same parking as for the, the rest of the event so it, it's really a lot of uh, city plaza uh, the Mesa Library, uh, any of the uh, the Pepper, well, Pepper Street Garage, the Centennial Way Garage, 
uh, any of the probably okay. there'll, there'll be a lot in the neighborhoods surrounding the downtown uh, uh, parks so uh, yeah parking is free but you, you got to find <laughs> I think just north of the Delta Hotel parking there there's parking spaces there oh yeah in and around the Delta Har yeah oh right there's a great parking lot just north of the Delta Hotel isn't there Mr. Freeman yeah so yeah, part, you might have to walk a little bit. Uh, so that's probably a good reason to come a little early uh, to enjoy the naturalization ceremony or some of the events you know, prior to the 9 p.m. Uh, fireworks display. It'll be 110 degrees, so be sure to hydrate. Yeah. But there are some activities that are indoors. Right. So it's not everything is outdoors, so. Well, if you want to get wet, you can do that as well. <laughs> right, there'll be a lot of hydration, there'll be a lot of uh, water for kids to jump into and roll around in. Inside the convention center, in addition to the uh, naturalization ceremony, there's a lot of very patriotic displays uh, honoring uh, uh, servicemen that have lost their lives. Mm -hmm. uh, there'll be a lot of reenactments, you know, out on the, the display areas in front of the buildings. So a lot of food, a lot of food vendors. It, it really is very much a carnival uh, environment, lots of fun. Uh, and again, it's uh, yeah, if you purchase food, I'm sure there, there's charges associated with that. But other than that, the, the event is entirely free. Uh, and we usually get very large crowds. So in this post-COVID environment, I'm suspecting we'll have, we'll be back up to, to a big crowd. So coming a little bit early is not a bad idea. Or in carpooling is not a bad idea. Maybe taking the light rail would be a great idea. Um, I just wanted to add one thing yeah. on the District 4 uh, uh, tomorrow's MESA meeting on the 8th. I misspoke. Um, it's at 640 North Mesa Drive, not 940, 640 North Mesa Drive in the Charles Luster Building. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Council, anything else that we ought to discuss regarding future events or things we've been up to? All right. That concludes then the uh, Mr. Heredia. Are you good? Take that as a yes. Yes. Okay, thank you. All right, if there's nothing else, Council, is there a motion to adjourn this meeting? Thank you, Mr. Summers. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Thank you, we are adjourned and we will reconvene in just a minute or two upstairs. For the